Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Sarah Schramborg, and this is the Oboe, another member of the Woodwind family. As you can see, it looks very similar to the clarinet, but with one crucial difference. The Oboe uses this, a double reed, which is two pieces of cane tied together. When I blow air into the reed, the two pieces of cane vibrate together to make a sound. Oboe reeds are very delicate and must be handled with care. Each reed is handmade, usually by the oboe player. The oboe has a rich, complex sound and is frequently used as a solo voice in band and orchestra because it has such a clear, emotive sound that carries over the ensemble. Because of its evocative sound, there are many beautiful solos in our repertoire. Here is one by Tchaikovsky. The oboe can also sound very exotic. Here is a solo from the Bacchanal from Samson and Delilah. And that's the oboe. Hello, prospective oboe players. I'm musician first class Josh Arvizu with the U.S. Navy Band in Washington, D.C., and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the oboe. First, the oboe is a woodwind instrument, so as you might suspect, it is made of wood. It is a double reed instrument, meaning it makes a sound by taking a piece of grass or cane and folding it back on itself and cutting it open to make a reed. So this is what a reed looks like. The reed by itself makes a funny sound we oboe players call a crow. Now be sure to listen and watch here as my fingers move in different combinations to make different notes. With that in mind, here is a famous tune I'm sure you will recognize that demonstrates my favorite thing about the oboe. The oboe started life in the Middle Ages as a shawm, a very old instrument, and it developed from the shawm into the first oboe in the Baroque times around 1680, 1690, and was used extensively by Baroque composers such as Handel and Bach. And the Baroque oboe was made of a different kind of wood to the modern oboe, it was made of boxwood and it only had two keys at the bottom of the oboe, a C key and an E flat key, and the rest were just holes. But it had the double reed and it made a fairly similar sound. Uh, following this, the oboe developed into the classical period where Mozart and Haydn wrote for it. Uh, it started adding keys as they went along until it became a lot more developed into the 19th century, early 20th century, and changed to this grenadilla wood that we have now 
and developed into the modern oboe. The wood that is used on the modern oboe is a lot heavier and more durable than on the Baroque and classical oboe and also helps produce a darker sound. The oboe comes apart into three sections like this. We have what's called the top joint and the middle joint and the bell and they fit back together. The metalwork has to be very carefully aligned because it's quite delicate. The modern oboe has approximately 46 pieces of keywork, the functions of which vary from simply covering the main tone holes, these six keys here, to uh, trill keys, and also these keys on the back which your thumb operates to help you um, play into the higher octaves. To make a sound on the oboe you have to place the reed on your lower lip and roll your lips over your teeth and blow. Because the opening at the top of the reed is very small, the oboe demands a lot of pressure and it's quite hard work. Um, it helps to start notes using the tongue, like this. Sometimes in oboe writing, the music is written slurred or legato, which means no tonguing in between the notes. Because the pressure involved in playing the oboe is quite high, it takes time to build up the stamina in order to play the long phrases that sometimes composers demand of the instrument. Playing both very quietly and very loudly on the oboe is quite difficult. It's all controlled by the muscles in your tummy, your diaphragm, just below the rib cage. So to play quietly, you have to almost use more air and more support than if you were playing loudly. I'll try now. And to play loudly on the oboe, you have to open everything up, really support with your diaphragm, open your throat and go for it. An example of one of my favourite tunes that the oboe plays in the orchestral repertoire is this from the slow movement of Brahms' Violin Concerto. information about the oboe. It is a member of the woodwind family. A wooden oboe is preferred. Most performance opportunities include bands, orchestras, solos, and chamber music. Oboe is typically not a jazz band instrument. Most families would obtain an oboe either through our local school's inventory or one of our approved local band music stores on a monthly rental, depending on what's available. The ideal oboe student is studious, detailed, and responsible. They like to accomplish homework, chores, or other projects without being told, and they can do that systematically with precision. They would be likely to learn things or read new books on their own initiative. They would be willing to work on fixing very specific things that require acute accuracy. They would basically have an aligned jaw without a severe overbite. They would be able to make a face where their chin looks flattened and pointed, keeping the top and bottom teeth aligned. They would be able to blow fast, cool, steady air for an appropriate amount of time. 
They have agile finger flexibility, large enough fingers to cover holes, with no double jointed issues so they can keep their fingers naturally curved. Some standard oboe equipment that all oboes will need. Their approved brand oboe, either Fox, Yamaha, Selmer, or Haworth. Two functional handmade reeds on hand at all time. These would be made by the oboe teacher. A silk swab. This swabs out the inner part of the instrument from excess moisture after playing. A reed case to store their reeds in. Optionally, if they have a wood oboe, would be bore oil. And optionally, would also be key oil. Things to avoid when beginning on oboe. Avoid obtaining a scary brand instrument from a non-music specialized online source. Avoid purchasing another brand not listed or a used oboe without first consulting your band teacher. Avoid beginning the instruction without first-hand instruction from an oboe specialist. Avoid not being willing to practice patiently a small chunk of time daily. Avoid chewing on your reeds between playing or not properly storing them in between practice sessions or classes.